Well, greetings, my fellow Whovians. We are back with Doctor Who Legacy. You should be aware, you must be aware, that I have already done a guide on basic gem use when I went through kind of the, the, the basic gameplay and gave you a few little tips. And then I went through basic character use where I talked about um, leveling up and how you use their abilities and kind of what their abilities do. And now we're ready to start on the advanced stuff. Specifically today, we're going to be looking at advanced gem play. If you haven't seen those first tutorials and you would consider yourself a beginner I very much recommend that you go back and have a look at those two um, but if you are advanced and you are ready to um, take it to the next level then come join me today so this tutorial is going to be all about Gems. We're not going to be looking at the um, the character abilities um, today so much, although there's loads to talk about that, and that we'll do that in, a, in our next tutorial. But today we're going to be just looking at what you can actually do with the gems that are in front of you when you get into a level. Because although at first glance the game seems um, to be quite simple, and it, it is, it's match three gems and try and take them down, there are a lot of little advanced things that you can put into practice um, to make yourself even more effective and to make yourself an even more deadly doctor. So tip number one for you as we're going to get into these advanced gem tutorials is this. Take your time. Most levels do not have um, a timer. And yes, some of them do, but the vast majority do not. And this means you can really take your time to work out impressive combos. You have five seconds, which is, it's short and it's long. It isn't, it, you can't just pull around a gem for hours and hours and hours, but you can put together um, really, really special combos if you just take the time before you start moving gems to work out what it is you are going to do. And when you get a, a, a board like this where um, you might initially kind of think, well, there's no point trying to put together a blue combo because they're all over on different sides of the board. With a little bit of forward planning, you really, really can. And in fact, even more than that, you can go even more advanced because you can actually take the time to not only get a blue five in a row combo, but to take as many gems and other combos um, with you at the same time. So before you play, think, plan, look at the board before you strike. So from a board like this, after a bit of thought, you can see that there's already a green combo in place which is going to be set off as long as we don't disturb it. There's a very easy little um, red combo that we can put together as we're bringing the blues across. And by planning out how you're going to do it, you can try and line up that blue combo on the right hand side as well. So off we go. So by getting those three combos in that turn, if I ended up with five, but by aiming deliberately for those three combos, you end up with a more productive turn than I would have done otherwise. One little word of caution, though, there. Um, I ended up with a, f a row of four blues rather than five blues, because to be blunt, I actually just ran out of time. You only have five seconds to put them together. So do try and do more than one thing in each turn. Um, you know, you could probably put together maybe a couple of combos or put together a complicated line, but don't try and do too much. The five seconds does go quickly and you will find as you kind of whiz across the board you don't have as much time as you think you do so do aim to do more than one thing and do try to put together more than one combo and do go for those fours and those fives but maybe not all in the same turn Now let's think about where we make our combos in the screen because um, sometimes you'll have options like th with this particular screen here I could put together a black combo near the top or a blue combo near the top or I could put together a combo near the bottom. Now think about this, if you put a combo together near the top you're going to disturb a few gems great and when you disturb a few gems you may end up with some combos but if you can create that same combo or an alternative combo near the bottom think about it again a lot more gems 
gems are going to move as those gems disappear. If you make a row on the bottom row or the bottom two rows, then the whole board is going to shift. There's going to be more chance all over the board of different gems lining up, different gems falling into place, and you getting more combos. Now, it doesn't always work, of course. You know, there will be times you'll put together a beautiful combo and nothing else will fall into line and you won't get any additional bonuses. But the law of averages and the law of kind of, um, you know, probability will be that if you are making combos um, at the bottom of the screen consistent, consistently um, or near the bottom of the screen, you're going to get far more additional combos than you would if you make them at the top. So when you've got a situation like this with these blue gems or the black gems here, if I was going to have my option between making a black combo near the top or a blue combo near the top or a blue combo near the bottom, I'm nearly always going to go for the combo at the bottom in the hope that it'll get me extra combos um, in the, in the hope that it'll get me extra combos for, by other gems on the screen lining up. Now in the tutorial it talks about making a five combo um, attacking all characters, which is true, but in the tutorial you make a five in a row in a directly straight line. However, a five in a, five in a row, uh, sorry, a five combo doesn't actually have to be a straight line. It can be an X or it can be an L shape with, um, uh, with, with six gems as well. But if I just show you with this pattern here, it's actually going to be quite tricky to get all of these gems into a row of five within the five second, but it's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, to put them into an X or a cross shape and you will still get the bonus of attacking all of the enemies um, with your attack. Take a look. There was an X, or I could easily could have just left the blue gem on the bottom um, to create a T, which again would have given the same effect of all the blue gems attacking all of the same characters at that same time. So this works with L's, with X's, with T's, and of course the straight line of five gems, all of them give you that multiple enemy attack bonus. And on top of that, this could be really useful, because sometimes it will just be impossible to put together um, straight lines from where just all of the gems are. So keep in, in the back of your mind that if you've got five gems on the board of the same colour, if you can't do a straight line, can you do an L? Can you do an X? Can you go and do a T? It nearly always will be possible to do one of those four to get the multiple enemy bonus. Now some people have asked how do you move a gem across the board quickly? Obviously the one that you're currently using are, are easy to move because you're physically controlling it, but how do you move another gem like this blue on the right hand side all the way across the board? Well the answer is spirals. You kind of have to keep twirling through it and each time you twirl through it spinning round in a kind of four loop or bigger um, the, the, the blue gem will move one further to the left and your spiral can be small um, just literally kind of disturbing everything else around it or in fact your loop can be far bigger if you don't want to disturb other gems. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, line up that four on the left first of all, the four blues on the left first of all, then I'm going to do a big loop down the bottom to avoid disturbing them, and then I'm going to try and line up um, the other blues um, by doing some quick twirls as well. So let, let's give it a go. Here we go through, then we go down, then we go across, some quick twirls, line it up, didn't quite get the last blue in place, but we still got the five combo um, at least, and we took down the enemy for the victory. So twirl and swirl like a ballerina to get your gems in place from one end of the board to the other. Now I don't want to let this tutorial run over 10 minutes, so I'm going to end part one of this tutorial here, but I have loads more that I want to tell you about advanced gem usage. I want to tell you about drop combos. I want to tell you about how to choose who to attack based on damage done, but also based on those numbers at the top on who is going to attack first and attack second. Um, I want to talk to you about how to clear useless gems quickly. I want to talk to you about en enemy vulnerabilities. I want to talk to you about when to attack, when to hold off, when to use a combo, and when to save the combo. There is loads more I want to chat about. So please, please, please like the video if you found it useful and subscribe as well. If you're not watching um, on uh, my channel, then hit the button that says YouTube in the corner. Head over to YouTube and click the subscribe button so you can get notifications about when the next tutorials are up. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for Tiny Rebel Games for making and continuing to support um, the game's um, development with loads of cool little advent gifts and um, lots more. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.